Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Rick with Porta Lux here at Clio Cultivation in Clio, Michigan. One of uh, Eastern, Northeastern Michigan's uh, top stores. Uh, they have everything you need for your indoor gardens. Uh, Buddy has asked me to come in today to talk about Porta Lux in our new products. For those of you who don't know who Porta Lux is, Porta Lux is a division of iLighting International. We've been a commercial industrial lighting manufacturer for over six decades. We entered the horticulture market about 25 years ago. And our lamps are, particularly our high pressure sodium lamp, has become the standard in the industry for best yields and best quality. Okay? So today we're going to take an overview of the line and then talk about some of our new products. So, We'll start off with our high pressure sodium lamp. Uh, our particular high pressure sodium lamp does better than the competition because, I thought, uh, because we have 27% more blue and about 17% greater overall energy compared to other HPS lamps in the marketplace. How do we do that? It's simple. It's chemistry. And that is what truly separates Portalux lamps from all other lamps in the marketplace. We do our own chemistry. If I ask you, know, what does that mean? What is the chemistry? The chemistry is what goes inside the mark tube. One, there are certain uh, chemicals that are used just for the creation of an electrical arc stream. The other chemicals are added to create color. What we see and what the plants see. And we own our own chemical plant, whereas every other lighting company in the market today buys their formulas from outside companies making it difficult to make any adjustments in formula to improve the quality of light. So, Portalux makes their lamps right here in the US of A. And actually, if you go by the way the crow flies, we're only about 100 miles from Clio, Michigan, in Metro Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. If you have to drive it, it's about 230 miles, but if you could swim, you could go right across the Lake Erie and hit our plant. Okay? So our high pressure sodium lamp is available in wattages from 400 watts up to 1,000 watts. Uh, one of the things that makes our lamp kind of unique is in our construction. Okay? We have a very clean construction. We have taken out virtually all the lead out of the lamp to make our lamp one of the most environmentally friendly lamps in the industry. We also do things like, you look at our mobile base, and our mobile base isn't glued on like everybody else's. Ours is threaded. We prep, as we're making the glass jacket and forming it in inserting the arc tube and the framework into the glass jacket, and we are also pressing threads into the glass in a reverse thread pattern. So therefore, this base, if you've ever had that offer, that time where you've gone to replace a lamp, it usually happens with the cheaper lamps in the industry that are glued on, you are maybe a little bit overzealous in turning it and tightening it when you installed it because you wanted to get a good contact. And now it's stuck. And you turn and you turn and you give it a little more torque and you hear a crack. You go, oh my God, I broke the glass, but the glass isn't broken. You just cracked the glue. And now the glass is separating from the mobile base. You're saying, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that happen. Okay. Well, ours will never do that. Because as you're taking it out, you're tightening the base. Okay? Now, question. What do you do if this were to happen to separate? 
If somebody comes into the store, but, oh my gosh, I was taking out my layup. And it's separated. What do I do? I plug the power. Bingo. Number one, unplug the ballast. Then wait a couple of minutes because there's stored up energy in the ballast. Okay, now how do you get okay, that's all done, it's safe. How do you get it out? Potato. The potato. This guy's smart. I've done it. Okay, I've you must have twice. Your father's an electrician, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old electrician's trick. You take the skinny end of a potato, you jam it up in there, it slices into the potato, but it'll hold, and then you can unscrew it. Okay? So, but the Hortolux lamp, that will never happen. Okay? So, let's go on to some of our other products. Oh, by the way, I, touch, you know, I was careful not to touch the glass lamp, but that really does not destroy the lamp as so many people believe. The, there are exceptions, but the majority of lamps in the marketplace have a glass silicate jacket that is tempered, very similar to Pyrex. It is totally non-absorbent. Your oils from your skin will not <coughs> absorb. <coughs> but then you got some guy saying, yeah, man, I, I see my fingerprints, they turned brown, they like, burned into the glass. No, the oil burned. It's just sitting on the surface of the glass, and when it's cool, <coughs> you can take a little bit of oil, I'm sorry, a little bit of alcohol, and it'll come right off. Now, the difference will be double-ended lamps that have a quartz jacket. The quartz will absorb the oil, and so therefore we do include a free white cotton glove inside every box. But we'll talk, let's talk about the double-ended since we're talking about it now. But is it okay if I open this one? I can replace it. You break you by it. <laughs> so, what is a double ended lamp? A double ended lamp is nothing more than a different construction of a high pressure sodium lamp. The different construction allows for greater energy per watt, so it makes it slightly more efficient, than about 10% more efficient than a traditional 1,000 watt lamp. So you can estimate approximately 10% more micromoles per 1,000 watts, okay? The downside is, because of those pressures in the output, it's harder to get that blue, and so therefore, not quite as much blue as you would see in our traditional HPS lamp. But you will get a greater microvolt count, which should equate to greater yield, but with a very, very, very slight drop in quality. Okay? Which is why a lot of folks now are adding other lamps to fill in the spectrum. Yeah. But take it, I put the glove on so I can handle this lamp. Because remember I said, double-ended lamps should not be touched with your bare hands. Because this outer jacket is quartz. It will absorb. So one of the things that we've done, if you've been using double-ended lamps from other manufacturers, you'll notice right away, as soon as you take it out of the box, at least half of them, you have to play around with the end wires because they're bent and they're frayed. If they're bent and frayed, when you put it up into the uh, receptacle there, the fixture, there's thin little slots that it has to slide through. The fraying on the end might catch it, bend the wire even more. The fraying could prevent you from getting a good connection, which could be an instant failure as soon as you turn it on and you burn out the, the uh, the socket, you know. okay? So, you know, you don't want that to happen. You have to have a good connection. So the first thing we did when we designed our double-ended lamp, which is also made in our factory in Mentor, Ohio, is that we improved the end wires. The first thing we did was we took out that little crimp that is in everybody else's double-ended lamp. 
which can catch on that slit as you're inserting it, catching it, causing that end wire to bang, not getting a good uh, contact and destroying your fixture. Okay, so we took that out. We have a patent, we call that a butt weld, and that should never separate. Two, to, come to uh, eliminate any possibility of fraying, we spent the extra amount of money to get a braided wire instead of a twisted wire, and then we solder the ends of the wire so that they will never fray. This gives you a very strong, solid, and easier installation with fewer failures right off the bat. Okay. The other failures of double-ended lamps happen when the arc tubes uh, explode or crack or the framework. You get a, a failure in the framework in one of the little tiny welds and that gives you a break in the electrical circuit and it causes a failure. Well, why does that happen? Well, for the most part, Getting, without getting into a huge discussion on electronic balance, there's usually a degree of what we call harmonic distortion that happens inside the arc tube, which means that there isn't a very, very stable voltage supply, which causes some wavering of the electrical arc string. It wavers too much, touches the arc tube, it can explode, and you have a failure. Or it could just cause vibration in the R2, causing one of the welds to fail. You couple that, that everybody overdrives these 31150, and you even get more distortion and more vibration and higher rates of failure. So what have we done? We introduced what we call our twin coil suspension. You can see it right here. The two coils on either end act like a suspension in your car, soaping up all the vibration, keeping the R2 perfectly centered for optimum operation, and quells the, you know, the vibrations and allows that natural movement of the R2 with the expansion and contraction process from the heating and the cooling. It heats up to like 800 some degrees and then cools back down to room temperature. It gets slight changes in all of the components and that can contribute to the failures of the weld, but with the springs and the coils, you're able to absorb it and take that off. You have a question? No, I do have one more. Okay, so that is our uh, double-ended lamp. At 1,000 watts, you should be looking at about 1975 micromoles and right around 2100 when overdriven to 1150. By the way, our single-ended lamp is around 1800 micromoles. And if you overdrive it, and it is pretty much safe to overdrive to 1150, you will shorten, anytime you overdrive a lamp, you're going to shorten the length of the lamp. Just like, think about your car. You put more gas. You, you put your foot on the gas more and go faster. You're going to use up more gas. So the more pressure in the lamp and the more energy you're pushing through it, you're going to use up that chemistry that creates the spectrum. And I'm not talking shortening the life from outright failures, which though it might, we're talking about degradation of spectrum, which is why you replace your lamps at least once a year. Okay. Any questions for the? Jack, what that for us? Yes, sir. The other one was um, glass silicate. Why the difference? Uh, good question. I would have to get one of our engineers that designed the lamps. Uh, it probably has something to do with heat. Uh, but to be honest, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. And I'm not going to make one up. No, I didn't, I didn't know that it had something to do with it being open, uh, open as opposed to closed. But. Well, this you can run in an open place. Okay, this you can run in an open clip. The reason why you run certain lamps in an enclosed fixture, and when I get to my metal, I'll start talking about my metal halide lamps in a moment, is because, because of the pressures inside the lamp, 
okay? HPS lamp operates in a vacuum. So therefore, if that R2 were to explode, it implodes in. There's a very, very slight chance of anything penetrating the outer glass jacket and causing, you know, a, uh, an issue in the room, you know, fire, health issues, and so forth. Metal halide lamps, on the other hand, are not in a vacuum. Therefore, they do explode outwards. So unless the jacket, and let me pull out my 600 watt blue, this has a double jacket. Okay? There's a protection around the R2 so that if it were to explode, and that is also quartz, so it passes all light. Okay? But we're not touching it, you don't have to worry. This is just glass. But I, I don't want to have it have fingerprints on it. <laughs> but it won't, it won't harm the lamp at all. Uh, so there, the, the, it doesn't absorb any extra light, so it's just like a, a, if you had it in a hood with a glass bottom, it's going to absorb anywhere from about 4 to 7, 8 percent of the light depending on the quality of the glass. It will also absorb virtually all the UV as well. Okay? This will let out some UV still. Even with the glass silicate, it still goes down to about 350. Okay? So a metal halide lamp, if it does not have a protected jacket, you do want to run it in a system with an enclosed bottom for safety. It's purely for safety. You don't want to start a fire. There are chemicals in those that you happen to be in the room when it explodes that are not friendly to the human body. You know, safety first. Okay? So, metal halide lamps tend to have a bluer spectrum and tend to be used more in the vegetative state. Though there are, of course, exceptions. A standard metal halide, such as our E-Start, which has been optimized for electronic ballast, has a very, very basic uh, spectrum, especially when you compare it to our Ortolux Blue, which is our premium metal halide with a spectrum closer to the sun than any other HID lamp in the marketplace. And you can, I'm going to come up closer so you can see the differences of the two spectrums. Okay? Can you explain the E-Start? That's confusing. Can you explain to our guys my E-Start difference versus the regular? Uh, yeah, the E-Start. Please. Okay. What Buddy was asking is, what is the difference between my powder blue box and my yellow box? There's about a $10 difference in the retail. The spectrums are virtually identical. So what's the difference? Well, this is an old school lamp with a probe start. That means there's an actual probe wire that goes inside that aids in the ignition of the R2. This, in, in this, tent, this was developed when there were only magnetic core and coil ballasts available, and this is optimized to work with those. Just about any good electronic ballast will also fire it. Our e-start is with a pulse start, which is a more advanced start, and it just sends an energy pulse without the added probe that goes inside the uh, the lamp. Uh, this is optimized for the electronic ballast, but that's what they do. They a huge electronic ballast. Okay. Uh, as far as spectrum, the same. The biggest advantage of going with the E-Star, especially if you're using electronic ballast, now this will also work with the magnetic core coil, but it has approximately a two month greater length. It has a slightly slower degradation of spectrum. So right on the box, we recommend for this one, our electronic start for optimal growth, nine to 10 months, which kind of coincides with our HPS, but the traditional uh, metal halide has six to eight months. So for about a $10 difference in price, you maybe get an extra run 
or at least a better second run if you're still replacing them every other run. And I think eventually this will probably like, go away. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Because we still sell a lot of these in the commercial industrial market. Okay. okay. Uh, while we're on vegging, let's also talk about Portalux's new ceramic metal halide lamp. A lot of folks have been hearing about ceramic metal halides. They've been around for a while. In light or blue, they do create a very good spectrum, similar to the sun. And I'll go ahead, I'm going to show you the difference between our blue and our ceramic metal halide. It's both of them are very full spectrums. Both of them have a similar color rendering to the eye. However, there are some advantages to the 315. The ceramic metal halide technology primarily was designed for retail workspaces to be a more efficient daylight. With, generally in retail spaces, you want a natural light as opposed to a soft light that an HPS light provides. Soft light meaning it's a little bit pinkish, yellowish, reddish versus what they call daylight which is almost a white or a blue to your eye. It's very easy to see with headlights of cars. Some are blue, some are yellow. If you go to the store, if you're replacing your LED lights in the house, or even regular lights in the house, you can see they say soft light, daylight. And if you buy one of each, you can very easily see the difference to your eye, okay? So this was designed for that kind of an application but because of the daylight, plants love it, okay? So these start to become more popular. But always, Portalux does things a little different, and we just don't buy somebody else's lamp and put our name on it. We designed it ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the box to show you what we have. Once again, you see a protected R2 with wire reinforcement. We believe ours to be the most, uh, the safest 315 in the marketplace. Okay, our 315 is designed to burn like this in a vertical orientation, like all 315s, regardless of manufacture. Yes. Many manufacturers are selling systems with the lamp going this way. It will not allow the lamp optimal efficiency and optimal output. You said your dad's an electrician, ask him. Okay. Well, why is that? Well, let's take a look at the way the lamp is designed. Remember, it's designed for an eight high bay fixture with a total glass luminaire around it to diffuse the light in retail locations, factory, workplaces, okay? It was designed for all that energy to go out like that, but now we're putting it this way. This way, it's operating fine. This way, well, it's hitting that reflector back down on top of itself, okay? The top half of the arc tube gets hotter than the bottom half. You start getting uneven output in a hot spot in the center of the lamp. If you ask any of your customers, if anybody here used them like this and then bought a new system that went like that, I guarantee you, you did not get the same results for the same wattage when running like that. I have not heard of anyone that hasn't had better results in systems that design like that. And then you go a little step further to what we do in our uh, 315 system. We have designed our reflector to more, uh, to be optimal for the use of that lamp. So here is a very clear picture of the difference on how we are focusing the light on the intended three by three footprint much better than the best selling version last year. This is ours, this is theirs. Huge difference. 
up to 8 to 10 percent more light and about a 30 percent better distribution of the light. There's no shadows, very even, uh, very evenly distributed light with no hot spots in our footprint. You guys have seen this, it's right on the box. We show it right on the box. The other thing that is different about our lamp, this is one of our competitors' lamps. It's not a bad lamp, it's well made. Okay? It has a different type of a jacket. It doesn't it does have a double jacket. It's a different construction technique than ours. I'm not going to say one is better or different than the other. Just a different construction technique. So of course this is safe to use in open fixtures. But one of the things that oh, so many of these 315 companies have been touting about their systems is the increased ultraviolet that you get from the lamp. Well, I would, I'm going to go over here. I'm not going to say, I'm going to ask Shane over here to read. What does this say on the base of the lamp? UV block. I didn't hear you, Shane. What did that say? UV block. He said UV block. And that means this was designed for a human environment. Yes, the rest of the spectrum is a great spectrum for growing plants, but you're not getting the added benefits of ultraviolet, which helps with the defense mechanisms of the plant. It helps make the plants healthier and stronger. Our 315 does not have that on the base because we were able to design this from scratch in specified glass that will let the UV out. Yet not so much that it's unsafe for use. But this will have 50% more ultraviolet than this will or any other plant. Now do note there are some slight differences in size. So if you're running a really compact fixture, please make sure before purchasing our lamp that you have an extra inch or so of room so that you won't have any issues there with installation, okay? Okay, so uh, the next lamp that I'm gonna talk about is a very, very unique lamp that nobody else in the marketplace has. We take, we're taking some of the technology from this ceramic metal haywire and technology from our high pressure sodium lamp into a lamp that we call ceramic HPS. Ceramic high pressure sodium. So, what is this lamp? Is that a halide? Yeah. Ceramic metal halide? Yeah. High pressure sodium? The true answer is it's a high pressure sodium lamp with a new technology R2. That is a ceramic R2, okay? Just as they're using a ceramic bubble in the ceramic metal halide. That bubble in the R2 is also made out of, of a ceramic composite material, okay? But, so what is this gonna do? This creates an unheard of far red spectrum along with <coughs> increased blue levels for a lamp that will create higher oil levels in your plant. This is not a yield lamp. This is a quality lamp. If you're looking in your flower to up your THC levels in oil levels in the CBDs, this is one of the ways you can do it. This lamp, we've had a uh, we had a grow out in Colorado, a medical grow that did a side-by-side -side test for us as a favor. And at the end of the test, we were testing against uh, a combination of double-ended lamp along with some 315s to round out the spectrum. A lot of folks are mixing technologies to round out spectrums. I'm sure you folks here know that, and hopefully you folks at home who are watching this know that. So, so anyway, so so when you when you mix spectrums, you know, you're oftentimes you're looking to fill in the hole, and so we're kind of like doing it 
for you here. Or give you all that extra red, and then in the far red. And what does the far red do? The far red is a penetrating energy. That's the energy that penetrates the canopy, also helps the undergrowth for fuller plants underneath, and will penetrate the ground and give energy directly to the roots. Now we're not now in that case, that penetrating energy is not so much uh, quality energy. That's growth energy just to help them to more approximate what the plant gets outside. On a day like today, we're in the middle of winter, it's sunny outside, there's plenty of far red outside. And so that, that's what penetrates the ground and keeps those plants going. So we have been very excited about this, and it is featured in our SC600 system. Once again, we have done a lot of research into the reflectivity and the design of the reflector so that we do have, you know, again, putting more light on target with a better distri distribution of light among that footprint so you don't get the hot spots and uneven growth in your garden. This will provide a 4x4 four four footprint at approximately 3 feet over your garden. And I, I didn't mention it with the 315, but our 315 will be a 3x3 three three footprint at 3 foot over my garden. And then I always get people ask me, well, what if, you know, that's only 315 watts. I, I thought you could go 2 feet over your plant. Well, of course you can. But we optimize this for a 3x3 three three footprint. And if you want that 3x3 three three footprint the way we designed it, you put it at 3 feet. So what happens if you raise it? Well, the footprint gets bigger and weaker. So you have less light spread out. What if you drop it down to 2, two feet? Well, now that footprint shrinks. You may be at 2 feet or 2 and a half feet. But on the other hand, putting more energy on the plants. I would not go less than 2 feet with concerns about burning the plant. So as long as we give you that base level, you know, that base uh, measurement of three feet, you're going to get three foot by three foot, and then you can adjust it as you see necessary for your garden with an understanding. And a good way to, to see the effect of that, just take a flashlight, put it on a table, look at that, the, how the beam looks, drop it, oh, it changes, gets tighter, lift it up, oh, it gets bigger, but it gets lighter. Same principle. Okay. Uh, well, six hundred question. Yes, sir. Six hundred square pressure. So, can you use the gold ballast or strictly? Okay. No, the gold ballast. Uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. The gold ballast is the same ballast with the removal, with the removing of the on-off switch. Because in the system, you're generally plugged into a controller with no need for an on-off switch. Uh, but it's the same ballast, and so other. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm going to bring up one other characteristic of this plant. Something that is both a plus and a minus. Life's a compromise. Let's talk about the plus part because it's a wonderful plus. This lamp takes close to 20 to 25 minutes to fully warm up to operating temperature. It starts off with the yellowish, reddish glow, slowly warming up as the chemistry mixes until you almost get a pure white glow. You would almost have to put it right next to a metal aid light lamp to see that there's still the faintest of pink in this. Otherwise, it almost looks white to you. Okay? Why is that a benefit? Sunrise. It mimics the sun rising. Plants don't get a blast of energy at 6 a.m. in the morning. They get a peak of energy. And then the peak gets a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And over actually more, more like a couple of hours, the sun gets high and now we're at pretty much full intensity. Okay? So this does it in about 20 to 25 minutes and the plants truly love it. The downside, let me ask anybody here, 
How long does it take for a standard HPS lamp to reach full operating temperature? Anybody? Five minutes. Six to eight minutes. Metal halide lamps. How long does it take for a metal halide lamp to reach full operating temperature? Four to five minutes. <laughs> okay? Therefore, when electronic ballots were being designed for our industry, there were no lamps in the industry that required a 20 minute warm up. Therefore, if they were designing it specifically for the horticulture industry, there is no need to design in a 20 minute warm up. So after about 10, 12, usually 15 minutes is the max that most ballasts will give. They'll sense that the lamp isn't up to operating temperature, and it shuts it down. Now, why does our ballast work? Well, of course, we designed it in, but why does our gold ballast work? Which we had uh, years before we came out with this. Well, there are specialty lamps in the commercial industries that have slow warm-up times. And being that we're a commercial industrial lighting company, when our guys were writing the specs, they wrote the specs so that it will be compatible with as many lamps as possible. They were just Wait, that's the way engineers sometimes think. And it was just kind of happenstance that when we developed this, we already had a ballast that worked it, and we didn't have to come up with something new. But this is now considered Hortolux's best flower lamp. You can see our growth chart here. It is our best flower lamp, and pretty much equals our Hortolux blue for our start to finish operation. So let's talk a little bit more about my board of Lux Oh, yes. Yeah, so is that a flower? I have a friend who swears by that flower. Yes. Yes. Okay. There, if you do, I get this question all the time. And, and the way I'm going to answer this is going to be by a, an encounter I had at MJ BizCon last year out in Las Vegas. And I was talking to, it was right when we were introducing our ceramic HPS lamp. We're all excited because we have a lamp nobody else has. And our, our pre-testers were raving over it. Okay? So I'm excited to show that lamp to any professional grower that comes into our booth. So I meet a guy from California who was a regulated medical grower, similar to the caregiver systems we have here. And I said to him, you know, hey, let me, come, let me show you our new flower lamp. Yes, yeah, sir, I'll take a look at it. I bring him over to our display. I show him the spectrum, that incredible spectrum, and show him how he even had more blues, which would help with the oils as well. And he goes, yeah, that looks pretty cool. But you know what? We're happy with how we're up. And how many times do you guys work in here in the store? Do you hear that from your guys? We're happy. We got it down in. We're good. So I said, well, OK, I, I get it. Please share with me. What are you using? He points at my blue. Because I'm using your blue. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Best veg lamp in the industry. What are you using to flower? I just told you. I use your blue start to finish. Wow. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? He goes, sure. I told him where I'm from, Michigan. I, you know, similar caregiver system what they have in California. I talk about how I talk to you know, literally thousands of growers now, do hundreds of events, giving seminars, talking to people. I've talked to lots of folks who use my blue. Some of them will use it to supplement, but every time I talk to someone about using my blue start to finish in a larger type of a grow operation, not just a single one or two plant, the answer I always get is, you know, we love the quality, but there was a drop of yield of 10 to 20 percent. Yeah, we just can't handle it. We just can't do that. So they go back to using an HPS to maintain the yield. And the guy looks at me, and I'm thinking he's going to tell me I'm full of shit, that we're getting the same yield. I see him thinking, he goes, 10 to 20 percent? 
Yep, that's about right. But please, share with me. Why does that concern all my guys at Michigan? It doesn't concern you to have a 10 to 20% joint. And this is where the truth came out. And this is something to remember. Everybody grows different and for different reasons. You guys, dude, I'm a processor. I don't grow and sell flour. I get more oil per pound grown underneath your blue than with any other lamp I've tried in the 10 to 20% loss of yield equates, once I'm done processing, it was, it was no different because they got more oil. They got more oil per pound than they did with a drier, bigger yield that might look better for a top shelf because the buds are small. They don't get as big because there isn't as much of that heavy red energy, but all that blue in the ultraviolet that's coming out, plus the far red that's in this lamp, makes it up with oil production. So yes, you may get 10 to 20% less yield, but you're gonna get a much higher quality product. And that's why also now, so to get some of the yield back and maybe some of the larger flowers, that's why folks are checkerboarding in their flower room. Or you talk about folks doing the, I hate the term, finishing lamp. Okay? The finishing lamp, in my opinion, is a ruse. Because all that's happening is the plant is responding at the end of the cycle when you finally put back in the blue that it's been looking for. When it goes, when it stretches, when you take, when you turn off that metal halide or the bluer veg lamp and you switch on the red flower lamp, what happens at the first thing that happens, whoop, things are going, where's my blue? Where's my blue? You keep some more blue in the flower room, oh, all of a sudden, they go out this way. You know, they get fooled. So what happens is plants will eventually, just like humans, you have a vitamin deficient sun that we stabilize. Other parts of the body take over. Okay? So it stabilizes and you get some good growth, it looks great. And then you put that blue back in and, to, and all of a sudden the plant does these amazing things and you think, oh man, I discovered some trick. I'm tricking the plant. No, the plant's tricking you. <laughs> Because it's saying, thank you. Where have you been, Blue? I've been looking for you. That's just a theory. But I think it's pretty much spot on. You know, oftentimes as we grow, we notice things and we attribute the wrong factors to what happens, which is why you never change more than one item at a time in your garden, because otherwise you'll never know what it was that caused the positive or the negative effects. Okay, two more things we're going to go over. The first is our LED, our LED 240R with a beautiful LED veg spectrum. This was designed for veg. It was tested on cannabis plants, eight different spectrums, and this is the one that won out. It's something I want you to take a very close look at. This is supposed to be a veg lamp. Look at all that red. We put in a 660 chip, and we put in a 730 chip for IR. We are learning plants want more red all the way through, not just in flower, because they get it outside. A balanced spectrum all the way through, okay? So this particular unit is 240 watts. What is its best use for? a three by three veg garden. If you're using an eight light T5 with anything other than my power veg, which has ultraviolet, we've talked already about ultraviolet, how it helps the health and maintenance of your garden. This is gonna be an excellent replacement for a standard T5 for your early propagation. Okay, uh, if you're growing one or two plants, you want to use it start to finish, you will get better results than if you 
use T5s straight, you know, standard T5s all the way through. But don't expect HPS results or 315 results. It's just being low. But you'll get decent quality, because remember, when it comes to lighting, intensity is your growth rate. Spectrum is your quality. It's like calories with you. Calories are our growth rate. But you have to look at the individual calories, what's it made up of, for how it's good for you. Yes, sir. Well, in, in that case of my, there's a lot of intensity in the red on my surrounding HPS. Okay, for, no, no, you just said the intensity was growth rate. Well, well yeah, look, well, right. Well, okay. But, but the spectrum yeah. is, is quality. That's a lot of spectrum. Well, the far red, red we're learning, the far red, I'm, I'm kind of, I need to separate far red from the traditional red. Well, but look how high the traditional red is. Okay, okay well, yes. Okay. That, that is, but that also goes into the wavelengths that the plants use in that uh, cycle of the plant. So when they're in the flower cycle, they are using more red. When I talk about the growth with the far red, that is like the warming effects of the sun that come down and it goes beyond the ground into the roots. If you think about what infrared is, who else uses infrared technology? The military. What do they use it for? It's to see through walls, penetrating energy. So, again, when we say penetration, it's just bringing it down further, and you get more energy down lower, instead of being blocked, that's going to be more growth. Okay? So, but, in, in, and, I, and again, you know, some of this I talk in, in, in basic, we, we can get into much more specifics, and some of that I might have to review <laughs> some of the materials I've read, but it just in general, like calories with you, the amount of calories you have determines how much you grow. The quality of the calories determines what kind of growth that is. You know, which is why you know, bodybuilders, they go on you know, 3,000, 4,000 calorie a day Di diets, right? But how, how are those calories broken down? You know, you can, somebody else, <laughs> you know, three, 4,000 calories made up a different way. Is going to give you a totally different result. For sure. You know, I, I still I had questions about this earlier. I don't need to backtrack. No, that's okay. And I'll give you my best. And I also noticed that the part of the spectrum is missing. Ah, so okay, it's let's the highest it. peak on the spectrum of your PDM your PD and your your yes. your three people, HPS. Yeah. Okay. So that. what it was what he was asking here is and I'm gonna show this so in a second. The gap is, you know, the spike is on there, basically that that one. Okay, he was asking, why is this gap in the spectrum? The answer is text. We have noticed it wasn't the, no, no. the why as much as that is the opposite of where the HPS has that spike. Well, actually, no. There's, every HPS lamp has a gap like that. Yes, in our ceramic HPS, it's a little bit wider because we're pushing more chemistry. Oftentimes, it's only how you normalize the spectrum. Right. If you're, because when you get a spectrum off of a spectrolysis machine, it's a very jagged type of a right. model. Sure. Okay, so to make it look a little bit more easier to look at and to reference in a, in a retail hobby situation, they normalize it. So sometimes they take, they do an average of every three nanometers, every five nanometers, every 10 nanometers. And it just might be how they normalized it. Because if you look at my double-ended lamp, there's very clearly a small gap almost down to the bottom, just like in the ceramic HPS. But with my high-pressure sodium, it doesn't show that. And I'm told they were just normalized differently. Why they're not the same, normalized the same for both products? Okay. Probably because different people were working at the factory at the time who right. were normalizing it to yeah. and they did it different. I noticed that, I noticed that a lot in the regular and when you have the daylight blue too. No, the daylight blue doesn't have much one at all. It's a different type of technology, but there is a peak. Right. There's well, a little well, bit of a peak. Was in the green, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So so what well, this so everybody understands, when I say the chemistry. The red and the blue build on different ends of the spectrum. 
And as the lamp is warming up, they're moving towards each other. And then when they get close, they're like they're trying to put the same polarity of magnets. Oh, so that's what yeah, they're, they're, they don't want to touch. That's as close as they can get. Yeah, yeah exactly. And again, this may be normalized differently than this and this. And that's, a, that's an argument I've had with my company. They should all be normalized in the same way. Right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> no, that's good. And then the other thing you said, because again, this is going back to you versus quality of this land. Um, you talked about penetrating people with more growth than bottom. Yes. Which to me would be more yield. Yes. But you said it's not a yield. Land. Well, I mean, let me, well, I don't want to make claims that are not backed up. Right. I'm sure, you know, every grower is different. Every grower has different techniques. The reason I'm saying don't expect a yield difference is because of the one grower that I mentioned that had the, the very, very positive uh, increase in THC and oils, he told us that the yield was not significantly different. But they were using a good system. They were right. using a 315 match with 2750 DEs. The wattage was about the same. So perhaps. Again, you know, I, I wasn't there. I didn't see it physically myself. All they do, I just know that they, when they gave us the results and we asked about yield, all they said was, statistically, they're about the same, meaning the same six to eight percent per yield difference that right. you that you would all, you know automatically get based on a lot of factors. So I don't want to make a claim that say you're going to get a huge amount of yield. The only claim I'm going to make. That I can guarantee is you're going to get better oil. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, okay, with virtually no loss of yield, possibly an increase. You know, maybe you let it grow an extra week. And everybody says in a rush. Why not let the plant grow? Uh, perpetual gardens. But because <laughs> um, no, that's what we've been trying to figure out um, since we sold a few of these out there, getting a little bit of feedback from the growers that have them. Um, that kind of think of the hypothesis that DEs mixed with CNH is kind of giving you the best of both worlds. Right, right. But we're, we're wondering about switching the DEs out for this to save on the wattage, yes. to get more spectrum for the far red, the checkerboarding with the CNH is less than you checkerboard this. Okay, I'll tell you why you checkerboard with the blue. One, in the next couple of months, we're going to introduce SE600 blue. And then this becomes SE600 red. Okay. Both of these lamps are the exact identical outer jacket. Yeah, right. They both fit in. Yeah. They both fit in, and they both take advantage of the optimization of the reflector for that shape of lamp. Okay. So therefore, you're going to get the exact same spread because you go to a 315, even our 350. This is a three by three. That's a four by four footprint. Okay? So you may get some unevenness. It makes you, if you're using the same fixture for all your technologies, you're getting the same spread, it is easier to lay out for getting a you know, consistent yeah, growth right. throughout your garden. Yeah. You know, with this, you might have to drop this down a little bit lower, or maybe wait, keep it higher, and you're not getting as much intensity, right. just so that the one fixture isn't blocking the light from one of the others. So you have one up here and one down here. This one is going to block some of that light coming down here. You have them all in the same plane, and they they mix really nice. But what was what was brought up earlier? The, the difference between the, the CMH and the other blue, with the CMH of one advantage. Well, the CMH punches a little bit higher than its weight. I would say. Two of our 315s vertically operated could very well outperform a single oh, 600 here. Absolutely. Okay, but not if they're running like this. No. If they're running like this, I'll take this all day long. Oh, yeah, I feel like Have you guys heard that about the doubles? That they aren't getting twice that? Right. Have you heard that from your growers? Yeah. Yes. Okay, which isn't to say running like that is a bad thing, but you're not going to get twice of what you think. It's not the opposite. Sorry? It's not the optimal thing. Right, exactly. It's not optimal because you're going to have two hot spots. And again, you know, we put a lot of research into our reflectivity. And so many companies, the reflectors are a product of taking a product to a workshop and showing them a design and then just say, hey, fold some metal. Right. 
they're not doing the testing that we have done. Like we have done here, where you can see, hopefully this comes out clearly, where you can see that we are testing every six inches for full spectrolysis. So we have the baselines of how light bounces. And that's one of the biggest things we learned. Not all light bounces the same. Blue photons bounce different than red photons. So we optimized our reflectors to put more back towards the garden. Okay. So with that being said, let's go to the last product that I want to talk to you about. It's brand new. Please do not bug Buddy to buy this yet. It is not available yet. This is the only double Hortolux double-ended system in Michigan at this time. And tomorrow it will be back in a hot. Because it's all I want to do. Pass that out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. So yes. Oh. Why are any of your valves removed? They are. They're all removed. They are. This removes with four screws. We even show it on our website. We have a little gift. It comes right off. And you just run it on the left and touch for it? Yes. So it's just, it's just like yes. a port? Yes. OK, cool. So yes. The 315 nut. The 315 nut. This one, yes. This one will also be remote. Yeah, that's what I was most interested in. This oh. is. We have one open. If you look at it, you can see. You can see the four screws. It's yep, yep. one, two, and it's on the other side. Yeah. It's just little nuts. Right. It, these are, they don't fall off. I think those are welded on this side. So it's oh, so that, that panel that piece of sheet might okay. still be kept up with it? Yeah, that'll still be kept up Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. It's a couple of metal. Okay. You can, but you can drop the bows and take it out of the room. That's okay. what I was looking for. Yeah. I don't want to outside wall. We generally don't recommend moving it any more than 10 to 12 feet because you can get live drop. So this is Hortolux's brand new double-winded system. We are calling it the 1000 VS. It is going to feature our double-winded lamp. Here we go. Our double-winded lamp. So if you ask, we already had the mail. Well, why is it orange on the box? Well, someone made the decision to change the color of this box from black to orange. That's all. Okay, so I am going to unveil it. This has not been opened. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, this is the initial box. You know what else is in the jam. It comes with a very nice operating manual showing proper installations of the lamp. The majority of double-winded lamp failures happen from improper installation of the lamp, which is why I took the time to go over our improved end wires, which eliminates the vast majority of failures. So very nice there. What else have we got in here? Okay, we got packing. Oh, in this packing. Let's see now. We got both a 120 and a 240 cord. So if you're going to be running a 240, you don't have to tap on a $15 uh, cord to go 240. And here is the nice, pretty new box in the orange. It's my first time seeing it. Yeah, let's open it up. Because. And there's the glove that comes in the box. Is there any wrong way to insert the ball? A wrong way? Like back to it. Which way? Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Good question. Yeah, let me do the one that's already been over a couple of times. I'm going to replace this already in the store. What he is asking is some of the companies out there, there's a little nipple on the side of the lamp. And some companies are saying, have it up. Some companies are saying, have it down. And what we are saying, these are engineers with our lamp. Don't make a difference. If you're, fixed, if you're inserting this, replacing using our lamp to go into your reflector and system, if the original instruction said to have it like that, put it like that. 
If they said to have it like that, put it like that. What about like this though? The other way. Yeah. Left right. Same yeah. thing here. No difference. No difference. Okay. At least with our weight. Okay. What else we got going here? Guys, ready? Ba -ba -ba. Here we go. Here is Hortolux's DE system. It has a fully adjustable ballast. It will be one 600 watt DE lamps, 750 watt DE lamps. It'll overdrive 750 lamps to eight and a quarter. It will also uh, drive lamps, of course, to the 1,000 watt rated and 1150. When you put on EXT, that is for the external controller. And this will be controllable down the road. We will be introducing our new controller in the first quarter of this year as well. Uh, in the meantime, it should be compatible with any other controller in the marketplace. That, that they're, they're currently selling in the store. You guys want to take a look? Does that look up to a phantom controller? Or a it, should, it should be, so uh, yes, yeah, it should be no problem. So, Just remember that my feel like it. Be careful what it's saying. One of the things that we're doing to help with the increase of light, so many reflectors out there, have huge cutouts on the side. All we do is plug it up. We got three, four percent more light <laughs> for a couple of pennies worth of more metal. Actually, it's probably the same amount because they just cut out less, less, less scrap. <laughs> okay. We do put a protective film to remove it before use. <laughs> and don't forget, you know, clean your reflectors with a soft cotton cloth or a microfiber cloth you know, periodically. And just like with other re uh, reflectors in the marketplace, we do recommend replacing the actual reflector part once every year or so, because you do get degradation of reflectivity from the metal. So it would be, it is something. Uh, it does separate. I'm told that it's a separate. So there you have uh, the new product. We have other things on the uh, board for later on this year. Uh, we'll save that for my next visit to the store. And I certainly want to thank Buddy and everybody here at Clio Cultivation uh, for inviting me in to talk about my products. Uh, please, if you're in the area, stop by uh, Clio Cultivation. It's one of the nicest hydroponic stores in the, in the state of Michigan. I have to say that. It's well lit, it's clean, knowledgeable staff, and great prices. And I want to thank you very much. And, and everybody have a great 2019. Thank you. All right, let's get a round of applause for Rick. Rick, 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 this is what we've been talking about, like these spectrums. Right. All this is, so Rick, Rick, is 600 of this. I'm sorry, 400 of this, 600 of this. That DE says 600 on it. I don't have a 600 watt DE ball. Well, I, okay. oh, have you turned that off? Oh, uh, yeah. I will right now. Bye, bye, bye everyone. Now he's going to tell us all the secrets. Bye. bye. bye.